Hey beautiful people, good morning! Okay, so I'm getting ready for the day and I figured I would have a chatty get ready with me because why not? So this is gonna be a somewhat different video because I'm gonna be talking about multiple different topics. So I don't know what to call it. I thought I would call it like a tea cap because I'm gonna be having tea this morning and not um coffee. Well, I had coffee early. I've been up since five, you guys. It's It's a whole thing, so. Trying to be one of those morning wiggle people. But either way, here's the deal. There's a lot that's been happening in the beauty community. A lot of things that I have had opinions on, wanted to talk about, but quite frankly, I didn't think these would a whole video, like a whole bunch of separate videos. Because then this would become a reactions channel or a commentary channel, and this ain't that. No, she's not. This will not be that. So I thought, why not get ready today and then just share my thoughts on all of these things, just kind of generally, you know, like let's just chat about it. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going to do. If you're interested in that, go ahead and keep on watching. If you have no idea what's going on and who I am, I'm Jamila. I love all things beauty. I love all things makeup and skincare. And here on my little corner of the interwebs, I try to share all of the tips and tricks that I have to find high-end luxury and indie makeup at the best prices. I don't believe in paying full price makeup and I don't think you should either. So if you want to join the fam, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We would love, 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 love to have you here. Okay, so... I'm gonna, I'm not really gonna talk through what I'm doing, but I'm gonna be going in with the Flying Fiddles palette. And I'm trying to keep the intro short so we can just get to it. So let's do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, and I'm only doing this palette because I'm not ready to put it down yet. That's where we are, y'all. We are at the point where I am not ready to give this up. It's so pretty. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead and dive in. So like I was saying, I wanted to do a chat to get ready with me because there are so many things that are happening in the beauty community that I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I have like a thought on it, but I didn't want to create a dedicated video for it. Now, a couple of caveats going into this discussion. This is my opinion. This is not meant to be some hard, fast, like stake in the ground kind of thing. This is just how I'm feeling right now in this moment and just sort of my immediate reactions to things. Secondly, I might misspeak. That's just um, what happens when you don't script things out. So uh, surprise, I did not script this. I'm literally going to be talking off the cuff. So if something comes out weird, you know, it, please don't take it to heart. It's, ju it's just, you know, it's hard when you're not like scripting anything. So there's that. Feel free to disagree with me. Like, honestly, I appreciate when you all disagree or share different opinions, but keep it respectful. Like, what we're not going to do is be acting all kind of crazy and stupid up in here. Like, that's that's not what's going to happen. Everybody's allowed to have their opinion. Everybody's allowed to voice their opinion. Just don't be out here disrespecting people, please. Like, this ain't the place. I promise you that. <laughs> it's not. The place is not in my comment section. So just keep it cute, but definitely share your thoughts, share your opinions. Join in on the conversation. And I think that was the second point. I think the third point that I want to make is that um, I have not spent a ton of time researching every single topic on this. And there are a hundred percent, there will a hundred percent be points that I miss or things that I don't have all of the data or the deets on. So if I'm missing something, it's not because I purposely left it out. It's just that I don't, I didn't know it at the time, but please Feel free to educate me in the comments if there's something that, additional context that I should have that I didn't have in making this. Quite frankly, I struggled on whether or not to even create this video because people get real in their feelings when you start talking about things and they don't agree with it and fighting with people in the comments and having to defend my opinion is not something that I'm particularly interested in doing. So if this video sees the light today, <laughs> I got a little boost of confidence and I decided, screw it, I'm gonna put it up anyway. So here's the hoping it makes it up, you know? Anyways, so I have a list of topics of a bunch of things that's been going on in the community. What is this? Three, six things. So I don't know if we'll hit all six. And again, I'm not doing deep dives on any of these things. So it's gonna be a very, very surface level discussion of my opinions. So first and foremost, <laughs> the first thing I have on my list is Shroud Cosmetics. Here's the deal. <laughs> I'll give you guys a little bit of a backstory and then I'll, I'll give you my opinion for each of these topics. So essentially, Shroud Cosmetics released a new palette uh, called the Dark Academia in November. They put the palette on sale 
and since that palette has launched, they have been radio silent. Now, I personally thought that it was a weird release of the palette because when the palette was being teased by the brand and they had a couple of posts about it on Instagram, there were no swatches and there was not a single creator who had reviewed the palette. Now, it is certainly up to a brand to decide if they want to send out PR and if they do send out PR, it is 100% up to the creator if they actually want to film with it as well. So... I could have let that go that, you know, there were no reviews by creators because creators don't have to create content on products that they receive in PR unless it is a sponsorship, unless it's a collaboration then. And in that case, that case, they're being paid to promote this product. But I will say that it is very weird to see a brand release a product and have zero swatches available because at like the least, the bare minimum, a brand will typically swatch it on themselves. <laughs> so you will at least get swatches on of the product on the owner, the creator, whoever it is that works for the brand. And we didn't even get that. So when it released, I was very interested in it. It's a beautiful neutral color story. Not gonna lie, I almost bought it. But what made me say, mm, I'm a hold off is because of the fact that there were no swatches. Like even swatches on the lightest of arms will help me figure out like okay do I want this or not but not a, a swatch nothing so I was like absolutely not so I decided to skip on that release and then come to find out that and this is like a couple weeks later we are in December people naturally started asking hey when is this palette going to be shipped out because they had purchased it they'd gotten their notification some people had got even so far as gotten the shipping label had been printed so they'd gotten the you know con congrats or thanks for your order blah 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 and then gotten a notification that the label had been printed and then silence nothing not a single palette was shipped out and to my knowledge not a single person has received their product and here's why i'm bringing this up as a part of this conversation because i personally think it's unacceptable for a brand to go ghost like that it is horrible business and not only has the brand gone ghost and no one has gotten their palettes or their products or anything they've purchased and we are in February and mind you this was a November issue um everything is still operational so the brand's Instagram is still operational the website is still available up and running so like you could technically go to this brand's website and purchase products so if some unsuspecting person stumbled upon Shroud Cosmetics or stumbled upon a video about some shroud products, some old products, and decide to go and purchase even the older products, they are never going to get their products. And unless they come across some video like this one or a post by somebody else saying, hey, do not purchase from the brand, they are not responding, something is wrong, then that person is SOL, shit out of luck, as, as they say, because now you've spent your money and you have to go through the process of filing a claim with PayPal or your bank to try to get your money back. And I am just like, this ain't right. <laughs> and I get it. I know a lot of people are like, well, it must be that something has gone completely wrong with the brand owner. Like, they must be sick. They must be this. They must be that. I'm not here to speculate on whether this person is sick, dead, in prison, fleeing the country. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm not going to speculate on that because that doesn't matter in my opinion i as a consumer i would be very frustrated to have spent my hard-earned money and then nothing just like crickets now i was curious even though i didn't buy anything from the brand because i was like whatever happened to that academia palette and i was curious because i was interested in picking it up so i was like waiting to see reviews i know my girl cara beauty and the phrase she bought it so i was like did anybody get their palette? Because I want to see reviews so I can purchase it. So I started looking, nothing. I've been searching through their comments on Instagram, which are quite frankly filled with people being like, uh, what's going on? Like, are you okay? Um, and then I went to Reddit and it's the same set of comments. I don't even know how to use Reddit, y'all. But I was like, if, if somebody knows, it's going to be Reddit. So I went to Reddit to try to figure out what was going on. They didn't know what was going on either. Um... And what I heard in the Reddit, not even heard, but what I read in the Reddit comments was basically like something similar happened in 2020. I can't confirm, I can't deny, I can't verify. But that's what came in the comments. Um, and I was like, well, okay then. Now, 
if you are watching this video, I say, I, I talk about this just to say, go ahead and file your claim with your bank or PayPal or ShopMy or whoever you purchase your products from because I don't think it's coming. I don't think it's coming and I really, really, really hope that you get your money back. I feel really sorry for all of the individuals that may have spent their money. Um, and if anybody knows, like, is there something we should be doing to try to get the website turned off? Because I don't think that it's, it's I don't I don't like the fact that it's still up and operational and there are unsuspecting consumers who could just go and purchase things. It bothers me. So there's that. One thing I will say is that I don't think this is the fault of any of the creators that have worked with Shroud in the past. I know people have reached out to folks like Batty Bean to see if she knows anything because she's done two collabs with the brand. This ain't her fault. This ain't her problem. This has nothing to do with her. That's my opinion on it. I don't think that this has anything to do with her. This is not her brand. And yeah, I don't think creators are responsible for this in any way, form or fashion. And the thing is, you know, sometimes as consumers, especially consumers in the indie community, we tend to give a lot of leeway and a lot of grace to indie brands. And I understand it. They're typically one, two man shops. And when something does happen to the owner, the founder, it can be quite devastating and it can cause delays in shipping and processing times. Like I've seen that happen with other brands. Uh, and you know, typically the brand will put out like a, a notice that says, hey, here's what's going on. I don't know if this is a one man, two man show when it comes to Shroud Cosmetics. Um, so I really, really and truly hope that whoever is responsible for their, for the brand is okay. Um, but I also understand as a consumer, we have our own, our own things to do and I don't know about y'all, but I don't just have money to throw away. <laughs> I don't, I just don't. So, you know, do whatever you need to do to make yourself whole. Uh, when it comes to like the financial loss of Shout. So that was the first topic that I wanted to hit on. Next up, let's talk about the Juvia's Place brushes. I didn't even know there was controversy on the Tiki Talks until the controversy showed up in a couple YouTube videos. <laughs> now, let's start again with the backstory. Apparently, there was either one creator or a couple of creators who tried the Juvia's Place blushes and created TikToks basically saying that they were too pigmented. Is there such a thing? I have never heard of too pigmented being a thing. Might it be a thing? Sure, maybe, possibly. I could see how people would look at it and be like, you know, that is a, that could be a problem. But the thing that sent the interwebs and particularly black interwebs into an uproar is the fact that the individuals that or the individual because I've only seen one so far that had an issue with the blush it wasn't meant for them and I say this <laughs> laughing because honestly I thought that this was just a generally funny situation because this isn't the first time something like this has happened it was an individual of a lighter complexion. I don't know if they were white or what. I'm not gonna, you know, guesstimate what their race or their ethnicity was, but they definitely weren't black or brown in any way, form or fashion. So they definitely had much, much lighter skin. And they showed these blushes on their skin tone to be like, oh my gosh, it's too pigmented. Like this is bad quality or whatever. And here's the thing, I'ma need people to realize when things are simply not for them. Okay, I, <laughs> I think a lot of us have main character syndrome where we only think about ourselves, like nothing else matters except for us. So when something doesn't work for us, when something isn't specifically designed to be perfect on us, we get bothered and we want to complain and say that it's bad. And I think that this is extremely unfair in general because what happens is that people don't know how to separate this isn't for me with this is bad quality and those are two very different things now bad quality is it doesn't blend it's patchy it is too you know not even too emollient like it separates you know it oxidizes or or it changes that is bad quality to me in my humble opinion and all of this is my opinion again my humble opinion, all of that is bad quality, is that the product is not performing in its in, in the way it's intended to perform. See what I'm saying there? 
Now, if it doesn't work for you, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad quality. And I think sometimes people just need to take a step back and realize, you know what, I am not the target audience. And I think that that is particularly important in the beauty space for a couple of reasons, right? Because when it comes to beauty and doing reviews, you know, I will always, oftentimes have to check myself and be like, how am I framing things? And I'm, and I don't get it right, right all the time. Sometimes I get it wrong a hundred percent, but I try to think about the way in which I phrase my, my thoughts and opinions on products so that it doesn't come off as this is a bad product when it's simply just not a product for me. Like I try to be very thoughtful about the fact that, you know, this is more suitable for someone with a lighter skin tone. This is more suitable for someone with dry skin. This is more suitable for someone with mature lids. You know, those are the types of things that I try to insert into my reviews and take myself out of it because I realize that not everything is going to work for me. Now, the reason why I think that this hit people the wrong way extra is because Juvia's Place is a black owned, black founded beauty brand. And you guys already know when it comes to the beauty community, the, it's not exactly like black owned brands are running around rampant in this place. And Juvia's Place is one of the pioneers, in my opinion, or one of the brands that really came out and like shook the market. Because I think they came out with beautiful, stunning packaging with all of these images of like dark skinned women on their, on their palettes and on, on their products. And it was really affordable. So when you look at a lot of like black owned beauty brands, I feel like they tend to skew towards being on the higher end, more expensive side of things. But Juvia's Place is sold in the drugstore section of Ulta, right? And their products typically are quite cheap and they're always on sale. So they have a very, very special place, in my opinion, in the beauty market, in the fact that they are in the sort of drugstore category of products. And they're specifically catered to people of deeper complexions. Now, that being said, it's not exactly like Juvia's Place went out to the way and said, we not creating products for other people because like, unlike a lot of other brands, they actually have a spectrum. Their products run the gamut, in my opinion, from the lightest to the deepest. So the whole thing about it too was that you just picked the wrong shade. Like if you had done your due diligence and looked at the entire lineup of the products that they have, and picked the shade that was most appropriate for you, it would work perfectly fine. I mean, that's like me looking to buy a foundation and then picking the third shade if it have like 15. And that's like in the light category. Why would I go and pick the shade that I know not gonna work for my skin tone? Why? Why? <laughs> and you know what? I just really appreciate seeing a lot of other creators simply come out and be like, bruh, it just, it wasn't for you. <laughs> like. <laughs> Like it's it just have a seat. This wasn't yours. It's okay. And I think it was a lesson in, you know, when you're used to having everything catered towards you, here's how it feels to be excluded. Here's how it feels to not have something work. So I don't know. I, I personally found the situation to be more funny than anything else. Um, I do think that the original creator who had the issue issued an apology. And from what I understand, this creator is a makeup artist. So I'm like, you of all people should know better. Of all the people that had complaints, you should be the first one to be like, I get it, this is more suitable for X, Y, and Z. But I also want to acknowledge that, you know, Tiki Talks doesn't exactly leave a lot of room for context and for uh, conversation. Like, uh, it's so short sometimes that like, a lot of things get left out, misinterpreted, misrepresented because it's not a place where you're going to go for an in-depth conversation or an in-depth review. That's just not the place in my opinion. But again, if it's not for you, it's not for you and not everything needs to be said. Just saying. Just saying. Okay, we are 20 minutes into this. Let me finish my eyes and we'll get started on the rest of the face. Okay, so the eyes are pretty much done. Now it's time to get ready on the, to get started on the rest of the face. The theme for this is quick today. <laughs> like quick, quick. So I'm going in with my Fenty Mattifying Primer. I'm really just trying to empty this, you guys. This is probably one of the worst mattifying primers I've ever used, but it's neither here nor there. Anyways, the next topic on my list, AI-generated art. 
Um, this has been causing a lot of commotion, particularly in the indie community. And I'm... I'm, I don't want to go too deep into this because I'm going to start this conversation by saying that I am not educated enough on AI to speak about this. Quite frankly, I think most of the people that are involved in this conversation aren't educated enough to speak on it. I think AI is a developing thing. It's a developing field. People are just beginning to really dive into what it means uh, for, you know, human jobs, what it means for copyrights and claims and all of that and as someone who has only skimmed the biden administration's executive order on ai i don't know enough about what legislation or what legal things are out there to protect people when it comes to ai so when it comes to ai specifically in the indie community and in the art that's being used in palettes i i don't know if i'm that bothered just saying like personally i am not that bothered by it and like i said the theme for this is quick so i'm going in with my danessa myrick's yummy skin in 8.5 as my foundation today would i like to see brands use real artists for their artwork yeah absolutely quite frankly i find the ai generated art to be kind of weird looking like it's just <laughs> not the vibe that I'm looking for personally or to be quite frank I prefer like a very minimal vibe like a minimal piece of like packaging for example Pat McGrath all she has is her little hieroglyphics on the top of it and I'm talking about her motherships her motherships has those little hieroglyphics and that's it Tasha Natasha Denona like she has her um her midi palettes those are very very simple all it has is the name on your front Adept Cosmetics, like simple, simple packaging. That's kind of what I prefer because I do think that that looks and feels a little bit more luxe than the kind of cartoonish, um, very unrealistic vibe of uh, AI generated packaging or any packaging in general. Because the thing is, I feel like that looks very outdated very quickly versus the kind of sleek, clean, nothing on it packaging. Just, to me, just it lasts longer in terms of visually, it feels relevant regardless of what time it, it is in it. So that's my initial thoughts on it. Now, I do think a lot of people have very, very valid points about sort of the, the human aspect of it, particularly the stealing, uh, you know, art from actual artists and creators. Again, I have not looked into this enough to know like, how are creators getting paid? I know Anthony Rain, they did do a post about it and it was not very well received. Um, but they did talk about micropayments to artists. So it's not, it seems like there might be some kind of compensation for artists. Uh, but is it my favorite thing? No. Am I going to lose any sleep over it? Also, no. <laughs> like, it's not that deep for me. Um, and I do fully support using real artists i also want to acknowledge i recognize that indie brands will exactly have the capital or the money to to do that or, or i don't know how these businesses are run i don't know how they you know what their money is looking like so i'm not gonna make any assumptions i personally think that people have every right to be upset if it does not align with them and the brand has every right to keep doing whatever it is they're doing because it's their brand. They can do what they want. If it doesn't work for you, like, I mean, there are more than enough other brands to shop from. Like, we vote with our dollars, so just, you know, find another one. Like, there's so many indie brands out there. Trust and believe. It's very easy to cancel a lot of them. It is very easy to let go of brands entirely and not miss anything in your collection. I'm just saying. Now, one point I have seen some people make when it comes to this whole AI and um, AI generated art is that this is just technology and we have to get with the times and it's like, it is what it is. Yes and no, I, because like the thing about it is that yes, technology is always going to keep advancing. There's not really much we can do about it. Like things are always going to continue to advance when it comes to technology. So in some ways we have to figure out how to adapt and um, move with the times. 
But I do think that people are right to raise concerns when it comes to technology because at the end of the day, tech has no bias, right? So technology doesn't have a bias, but the people that program these these technologies, they do. <laughs> and that gets built into, into technology. And I think we've seen it through like other other fields, you know, like, and it, there, there's been research to show that, you know, large companies that use algorithms to do their job searches, sometimes the algorithm will bias towards certain names and whatnot. So like, so a lot of demographics get include, excluded from that. So like, we have to remember that these technologies, even though they don't have any bias, they're not they they're built by people who do and that gets built into the system and that can negatively harm people just overall so that's the other thing too that i am particularly thinking about is that the, i don't know who's building these ai models or these ai programs but like we all know every single one of us we have our own bias and we we bring it to everything that we're doing so i think it's definitely something that people have to think about i think it's definitely something that we should be concerned about and i think people have every right to voice their concerns i'm just letting my concealer sit a little bit before i stop blending it in so i see it i see all of the sides but again another not an issue i'm exactly going to lose sleep over <laughs> it is a valid one that people have every right to be bothered by but if you don't stand with a brand that does that, I think it's totally fine to be like, you know what, thank you, but this is just not where I'm comfortable right now. I'm going to shop elsewhere and move on. That's just my general thoughts. Okay, and we are speeding through these topics, which I appreciate. We only have like three more. Um, next up, Sephora Kids. So this is one that I thought was really, really funny. Uh, and I might spend a little bit extra time on this one than the others because I, it's such an interesting thing, right? When this first came out and it was like, why are kids in Sephora? They shouldn't be there. I was like, well, where else are they supposed to go? I will, I will be very honest. My original thought was that I was happy that kids were in Sephora because I'm like, oh, we're at a time where kids are going back to the mall. Like, that's so cool. Because when I was younger, right? in my more supple years, uh, you know, going to the mall was what me and my friends did to hang out. Like that's, that's where kids hung out. You went to the mall and you went into all these stores. You didn't really buy anything. Cause I mean, who could afford anything, but you, we were kids, but we hung out at the mall. That's where we spent a lot of our time. So I was kind of excited to see kids actually going outside, <laughs> like going outside and touching grass. Like, I mean, they're not going outside to run around, but they, they outside, you know, they're not inside glued to their screens. So at first I was like, why is everybody bothered by kids hanging out in the mall? And then once the story started to unfold, I realized that it wasn't that the kids were simply hanging out in the mall. It's that kids were going into this into Sephora and essentially destroying displays. So again, going back to the Tiki Tucks, apparently there's been this push for drunk elephant smoothies and skincare routines for kids. And I'm saying kids, from what I've heard, it's been like 12 year olds, 10 year olds. So these 12 and 10 year olds have been caught up in this drunk elephant skincare craze and have been going into these stores and t you know messing with the testers and completely destroying displays, creating skincare smoothies and whatnot. Um, and basically just causing havoc. So I've heard that some stores have even started saying that they need to be like kids need to be accompanied by an adult if they want to come in. And I'm like, damn, it's gotten that bad. Like, I didn't realize it was that big of a deal. So I have a couple different thoughts on this because I've seen two sides to the story. The first side being one that they're going in and they're destroying displays and they're being very rude to other customers and to the Sephora staff. And then two, they're going in and they're purchasing all of these drunk elephant and other very expensive skincare products. And given that they are so young, there's really no need for them to have like actives in their skincare routine because that's going to cause more harm in the long run. So I'm gonna speak to those two points specifically. The first one, kids going into Sephora, destroying the displays and being rude to staff and other customers. That I have zero tolerance for. That is some BS. And y'all need to train all the children better. I cannot believe that millennials, yes, us, 
We've raised such monsters, such holy guns, such ridiculously crass children with no brought up seat. What happened, y'all? Where did we go wrong? Because <laughs> the kids that are in these stores are, are the kids of millennials. And I'm like, how are we the generation like brought, raising kids with no brought up seat? What, how did that happen? I don't understand it. <laughs> I really genuinely don't. And that is where I'm like, oh, absolutely not. What we're not going to do is go in there and disrupt people that are simply trying to work. That is where I have a problem. Now, I will say, I grew up in a country where you break it, you buy it. And that was the, that was the thought process. So you couldn't simply go into a store and act a fool because if you broke it, you bought it. And... You know, America is a little bit more of a free fall. Like we have all, like all of those testers are there for you to play in it. So in theory, they're doing exactly what you're supposed to do in it. But we all know that there's a certain amount of decorum you're supposed to have in these people in place. So the fact that these kids are acting a fool and mashing up things, I have no, no tolerance for that. The other side of that too is the fact that they are being rude to the staff and to the customers also have no tolerance for that. And let me just say, I am not evolved enough to have a child disrespect me and stand up and take it. I'm not the one. I will not be pushed out of the way. I will not have attitude because I will answer you back and I will push you back. Yes. I am not evolved enough for this, you guys. I promise you I am not. So thank God I have not been inside a Sephora store. I have not seen these kids. I typically shop online because I have zero interest and intentions in going to jail over pushing somebody child. <laughs> I don't want to. But again, I am not involved enough to sit here and have a child disrespect me, a child that I don't even know, and stand up and take it. Who? No, not me. Not me. Not at all. That is not my... That is <laughs> I, I can't. I cannot. I cannot. And I feel so much empathy for like the employees that can't do anything to these kids and have to sit there and be disrespected by a 10 year old, by a 12 year old. Nope. Because at the end of the day, we all know in this economy, all of us are just trying to stay employed. We are all just trying to make a living and go about our day. So please get your kids. And I'm saying this generally, I'm not talking to, to you all specifically, but I'm just saying this generally to like people, get your kids because it's not fair. It's really not fair to, to the employees of Sephora to sit there and have to deal with that level of disrespect. That's, that's, that's where I draw the line. Okay, then to the second point of this conversation, which is the, they are buying actives and buying all of these drunk elephant products and they don't need it. It's actually going to do more harm to their skin than good. Here's my thoughts on that. That is some rich people problems. And that's the be all and the end all of that thought. It is some rich people problems because if these kids are going into these stores and buying drunk elephant, which I don't know if you guys have seen the prices of drunk elephant, but it's not cheap, <laughs> which means that some adult in this 10 year old's life is providing them with the funds to be able to buy drunk elephant and all these other expensive skincare products. Cause there is literally only one skincare line and that's the inky list, I believe, that is affordable inside Sephora. Everything else is expensive. So, these kids that are going in and buying actives, they are doing it, in my opinion, from what I can see, with the permission of their parents. So that is simply not my problem. That is not your problem. That is nobody else's problem but the parents. And I don't know any normal, regular, degular, smegular teen that is just being given hundreds of dollars by their parent to go inside a Sephora because we already know, we as adults know that when you go into Sephora and you pick up two things, you're already over a hundred dollars. You might spend a hundred and twenty dollars on two things. So the fact that these kids are going in and buying multiple products for their skin and applying, 
and 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 coming out with Sephora skin gear hauls. Again, y'all, that is some rich people problems, and I'm telling you, mind your business, mind your business, because <laughs> that has nothing to do with us. If you want to take your 12, 10 year old and buy them a retinol and buy them all of these active products, I'm also going to assume that you can afford to take that same 10 year old when they're 16 or whatever to see a dermatologist to help repair whatever damage is caused by them using these actives way too early in their life. So those are my thoughts. <laughs> when it comes to Sephora kids, the disrespect, the damage property, I, I'm really, really not here for it and I'm definitely not evolved enough to deal with it in person because I will not respond nicely. Um, so hard no on that, but the buying actives or whatever, not my problem. <coughs> could care less, like, again, rich people problems. Okay, the next one is also kind of, well, is it funny? Not really. So the next one is a, a little, I, well, I guess it is drama. So it's, there's been some drama between Michaela Naguera and a tan, a brand owner who owns a tanning, self-tanning thing. As somebody who doesn't self-tan, I was like, I don't know what's going on. This, again, sounds like something that has, that I could care less about because I don't tan, you know, I am tan. Um, but when I dove into the actual storyline of it, I was like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> so backstory, apparently uh, Michaela and this brand owner, <sighs> okay, so basically this brand owner had tried to reach out to Michaela online uh, to get them to review their product because they had, you know, we all know Michaela has a lot of play when it comes to beauty products. She can sell things out in a heartbeat. Um, and according to the brand owner, another larger brand had stolen their concept and was trying to get creators to promote their products, which would in turn bury him. You know, we know the old, we know this happens all the time where a small brand will create something, a large brand will steal it, and then you know, the smaller brand is one that suffers from it. So don't support that at all. Like I hate when big brands do that. So they reach out to Michaela. Michaela promised them that they would, that they would do a review of this tanning product and then never did the review. The brand owner came online and said that Michaela cost them $10,000. And it turned into this like whole thing of like Michaela is a terrible person. She doesn't keep her wood. She's costing me all of this money. She might be the reason my business fails, blah, 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 blah. She's messing with my mental health. And at first I was like, oh, what did Michaela do now to this poor little boy? Because <laughs> we all know, we remember Mascara Gate. Like she doesn't exactly have the best or the shiniest reputation in the community. And then when I dug deeper into the story, even as he was explaining it, I was like, so what? This sound like you messed up and this was a your problem and your fault all the time. And I don't ha exactly have a high opinion of Michaela. I find her to be quite dishonest. I find her to be a little bit over the top. I just find that she's not my cup of tea. She is not my, you know, cup of tea, cup of coffee, sprinkle of juice, none of that. So when it comes to Michaela, it's not exactly I have, like I have love for him, but right is right and wrong is wrong. And <laughs> she didn't do anything wrong in this. Should she have given this man her word and said, yes, I'm gonna film it and I'm gonna film it on this day? Absolutely not. Because, you know, there is something to being mindful of like your it, like if you say you're going to do something you should you should stick to your word because that that is important for us as a society right but three points i want to flag yes i think three on the other side of this one this man had no contract with this woman so he expected her to work for free and me I personally don't believe in working for free. And for you to get upset about somebody who was essentially going to do you a favor, you have some whole grain audacity. Because, again, there was no contract, there was no payment, as I understand it, not, nothing. You expected this woman to work for free. And that, I think, is disrespectful as hell. Disrespectful to her time, disrespectful just in general. Stop asking people to work for free, period. Especially if you are a brand. Stop asking people to work for free. That is not okay. Second. <laughs> Why am I so dramatic? But second, you claim that 
that she cost you ten thousand dollars because you decided to buy a bunch of product because she said that she was going to review your review your brand and you wanted to make sure that you were stocked up for all of the orders that would come in how do you know she was going to give you a positive review what if she didn't like it i mean <laughs> i don't understand how it becomes her problem that you decided to take out a loan, buy a ton of products, and then she didn't review it. Because the thing is, if she had reviewed it, there was no guarantee that she was going to like it. There was no guarantee that she was going to give it a glowing review. So, again, that, that some audacity to sit there and be like, I am 100,000% sure I mean, I love the confidence. Like, if you are that confident in your product that it is going to be, that she's going to be obsessed with it, she's going to be so in love with it, she's going to sell it out. Then I, I, you know, I need that level of confidence in my life. <laughs> but again, that was not her, her fault. She never told you to go ahead and take out all of that product. And at the end of the day, you had no idea how she was going to review your brand if it was going to be extremely successful. And while I do think that Michaela has a ton of buying power and there are going to be people who are going to rush and purchase the things that she recommends, I don't think that everything she recommends sells out. I do think that most of the things she does will sell out, but I also feel like there are certain products that tend to have like a niche audience, you know? Like not everybody's self-tanning, so I don't know if it will have the same amount of interest in general. Um... So there was also no guarantee that even if she did post it and she did love it, that it was going to sell out. There was zero guarantees in this whatsoever. And also zero guarantees because you didn't have a contract. You can't be mad because you didn't pay for something and you didn't get what you wanted. Like, make that make sense to me, yeah, y'all. Like, I, I am so confused about how people could get upset about something they didn't pay for. <laughs> like, it was just so stupid. And then to come out and be like oh, she doesn't care about my mental health. She doesn't have to. Just saying. Like, I, I feel like as a people, we all need to re realize that nobody owes us anything. Nobody owes us a single thing. She doesn't have to care about your mental health. Should she? Of course, it, it would be nice if, people, if we all cared about each other's mental health. But she doesn't have to. It is well within her right to absolutely not care about your mental health. So, to sit there and be like, oh, she didn't care about my mental health, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, 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 no. What we're not going to do is sit here and try to rewrite history. Like, you didn't make a dumb decision. And now you're trying to make it her fault. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get behind it. <laughs> and I... I do want to underscore that I don't exactly like Michaela. I don't like her content. I don't watch her content. And I also don't like her vibe. I don't like her ability to bend, break, and warp the truth a little bit for views, for payment. You know, like, I don't find her to be trustworthy. Let's start there. Uh, so... I'm not here defending her because I think she's some great moral, like, person that needs to be defended. I'm just saying right is right and wrong is wrong. And homeboy came out very wrong and strong. And I was like, oh, no, you need to sit down because this is your fault and your fault only. Like, and I know people are like, well, I see the side where Michaela shouldn't have given her wood. Yeah, absolutely. She shouldn't have given her wood. She shouldn't have committed to it. But at the end of the day, I still don't think she's wrong. Even if she did commit and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to do it. You have no contract. You have nothing in writing. So sit down <laughs> and relax. All right. Okay. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is the Charlotte Tilbury and Elf situation. And there's not really much to say about that other than I find it quite funny. I too was confused by the Charlotte Tilbury commercial, if we're going to call it that. I found it to be very, very cringy. And it does seem like Charlotte has a little bit of a beef with Elf and is feeling some kind of way. And from what I understand, Elf's like best-selling product from last year was the Charlotte Tilbury dupe for the Flawless Filter. So I, I think I might feel some kind of way too, where 
if if I saw another brand like raking in millions of dollars on a product that was essentially mine. So I understand the upset or the icky feeling that that would bring uh, the brand. But I also think that you have to let it go. I feel like this is not even really worth it. It feels kind of weird that this is becoming a beef because like I said in my dupes video, I don't think that this took away from Charlotte's business at all. I think the people that were always gonna buy Charlotte were gonna buy Charlotte regardless. I think that this just created a product for other consumers uh, who just could not afford to or did not want to spend that money on Charlotte's product. Excuse me. And if I'm not mistaken, there have been multiple other brands since then that have released similar products. So it's not even just Elf duping Charlotte at all. So there, there's a whole host of brands that are doing it. So I don't know what the, the issue is, but it's just like a very weird, almost petty conflict. And I'm just like, now Charlotte girl, you are above this. So let's, let's be above it and move on. All right, let me finish up the rest of my face and I'll come back and wrap up this video. Okay, so I'm back and this is the final look. Let me bring you guys in a little bit closer so you can see. Yep, this is what the eyes are looking like. I know I said that this was spicy neutrals, but honestly, the colorful looks you can get from this, really nice as well. I still think it needed like one or two more mattes, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I wanna say this on camera so that I know to put it in the description box. Uh, where, where did I just put it? For my blush, I'm wearing the Bare Minerals Kiss of Bron Kiss of Rose Blonzer. I'm wearing two uh, bronzer. That's not what it's called. So for my blush, I'm wearing the Bare Minerals Blonzer. This is in the shade Kiss of Rose. For my bronzer, I'm wearing the uh, Glowish Bronzer from Huda Beauty as well as the Invisible Bronze from Bare Minerals. And for my highlighter, I'm actually wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Star Highlighter. I do believe that this is discontinued, uh, but that's pretty much it. And then for my lips, I'm wearing an old House Labs liner in the shade Neat with my Sydney Grace uh, Lip Cream in Tracy on top of it. You guys know how I feel about Tracy. She's just that girl. She's just that girl. Okay, so let's wrap up this video. I truly hope that this video sees the light today because <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. I did have some thoughts. I would really love to hear from you guys in the comments. Like, how are you feeling about the topics that I talked about? I'd like to hear your opinion on one or all of the topics. Did you know about them? Were you interested in them? Do you have thoughts and opinions on them? If you aren't comfortable sharing your opinion, which is completely valid and totally okay, please leave a heart. You guys know all of the engagement helps. That certainly helps as well. And I'm gonna just wrap it up by saying, keep it cute. Like, honestly, y'all, it's not that serious. And I mean that dead ass, it's not that serious. So please keep the comments respectful. Like, you can disagree you can have a different opinion you can have no opinion at all but just keep it respectful in the comments as always I want to thank you guys so much for watching and engaging and I hope you enjoyed this video I know it's very different uh, but y'all know this is the year of different so thanks for sticking with me as always I appreciate each and every single one of you so much more than you know and I'll catch you guys in my next one bye